Um, HRNA, um, yeah. So this is Ada Penn uh, with HRNA Advisors. And as Charla mentioned, um, we have been engaged to conduct a housing and small business anti-displacement study to support the urban village plan update and develop a displacement risk mitigation plan. And as mentioned, this region is really growing rapidly and the incoming transit investments will bring in new development and growth opportunities, which can have positive impacts to this neighborhood, but without careful planning, it can also cause potential displacement of local businesses and residents. So our team along with VTA and the city really recognize this opportunity and are eager to work with the opportunity uh, to work with the community to ensure that arrival of transit will not be disruptive to local residents and business, but instead provide opportunities um, for existing residents and business to stay here and continue to grow and thrive. So today our presentation will focus on existing conditions analysis for both the housing and small business fronts. And we would love to hear feedback um, to provide us guidance on our next steps when we look at anti-displacement best practices and mitigation strategies. Next slide. Um, so we will start from the housing front. Next slide, please. And so on residential, we look at demographic and housing trends based on the study area that includes all of the six urban villages around five wounds. And that includes 13 census tracts, which is larger than the proposed plan area. And the study area that we look at um, includes a total of 17,500 households with 67 renter households which is at a much higher percentage um, compared to the city at large with only 44% of renter households. And UC Berkeley Urban Displacement Project did a relevant study in 2017 that indicates part of our study area have already experienced gentrification while other areas are very vulnerable to displacement. Um, and it, this study area also show a stronger signs of displacement pressure compared to city at large. 45% of households are cost burdened, as the, which is defined as spending 30% of your income on housing. That's much higher than the city average at 37%. And similarly, um, for the study area, 20% of renter households living overcrowded condition but for the city at large, it's only 17%. Next slide. Um, so there are various signs of gentrification. Um, as we can sh see on the slide, it's showing the property value um, change from 2010 to 2020. So property value have increased 45% in the past 10 years, which is roughly at the same pace with the city. Um, city increase around 46%. And currently the median home value for the area is at 60, is at um, 655,000. And that implies that a household has to have an income of more than 120,000 to be able to afford a median price home. To provide some benchmark, the median household income for the study area currently is at 67,000 and which is lower than the city median at 117,000. Um, and rents have also increased significantly for the study area, although at a slower pace than the city, um, but partially because there haven't been any uh, new market rate rental multifamily projects in this area uh, for the past 10 years. And Comparatively, the median gross rent for the study area is currently at 1,700, um, which is relatively more affordable than this city area's adjacent downtown neighborhood and also the city at large. Next slide. Um, when we look at the underlying demographic for this study area, it also shows signs of gentrification. 
So from 2010 to 2020, a total of 1,700 households were added. Um, however, when we look at the changes broken down by income category, we can see that um, the most significant changes at the two ends of the income spectrum. There is a significant decline, decline in the number of households earning less than 35,000. And there's also a significant increase in households earning 100,000 or more. And this suggests that it is less likely in organic growth of household income. So for households who are earning 35,000 um, or below, it is very likely that they were potentially displaced and moved out of the study area um, compared to the, their household income increased significantly to the highest income um, category. Um, and another um, implication is that the influx of these high income households to the study area are more likely to be homeowners. Next slide. Um, we also look at data on housing type by tenure. And um, even though the renter households have increased 1,400, um, 78 from 2010 to 2020, all these increase are renters in multifamilies. And when we look at single family and duplex renters, there's actually a net decrease of 253 um, households. And these single family and duplex renters are particularly vulnerable since they are not covered under the um, city's current apartment rental ordinance. However, these single family and duplex renters um, do constitute a significant population of the study area at um, around 21% of all households. So they remain to be particularly vulnerable as property value continue to increase and homeowners um, have greater incentives to sell and take their properties off from the rental market. And based on our understanding, the city is currently conducting a study on the apartment rental ordinance and looking at um, potential changes. Next slide. So to summarize on the housing front, we have identified four specific groups that are particularly vulnerable to potential displacement. And that includes single family renters, households with limited English speaking ability, lower income renters and overcrowded households. And we will include more detailed analysis in our memo, um, but um, definitely welcome questions and inputs as that will guide us um, for our next steps when we look at strategies. Next slide. So moving on to the commercial front, um, next slide, please. Um, we look at a similar study area that also include the six urban villages and in order to have a comprehensive understanding of the local business environment around the future BART station. So the study area that we look at include 850 business uh, businesses and um, 2,700 jobs. And this map shows where different types of business are currently located within the study area. And we will have more details on different types of industries over the next few slides. But here we can see that um, the pink dots, those represented um, industrial and auto services business, which are mostly located in the five ones, um, as well as 24th and William urban villages. Um, for retail and food services, they're mostly concentrated along East Santa Clara Street, Alum Rock Avenue, the primary commercial corridor of the area, which is indicated in blue. Um, and the local services, which um, are indicated in orange, are pretty evenly dispersed throughout the study area. Um, and in, in summary, we looked at a couple indicators, and it really shows that this is a strong, stable, small business cluster that serves local residents. However, businesses may be vulnerable to displacement if the consumer base or real estate cost change significantly in the future. Next slide. 
And in terms of um, types of business, um, the business in this study area are primarily concentrated in industrial and auto services, retail trade and food services, and local services that includes beauty and nail salons, household repair, and other personal services. And these top three sectors um, comprise 73% of all jobs and 75% of all business in this study area. Next slide. Also, these business um, are hyper local serving. More than 80% of visits to business in the study area were made by people who live within five mile radius. So it is likely that uh, those are retail and food service business that serve the surrounding community in particular. And some of the industrial uses like construction and auto services may serve a larger radius for the broader city. And um, so most of the business here are strongly reliant on local population and will be at greater risk of displacement if the dem demographics of this neighborhood change dramatically. Next slide. So before 2019, um, business starts were generally stable with an average of around 100 business starts annually in the study area, which shows a historically strong and stable business environment. However, during COVID-19, just like everywhere else in the city, the number of business starts decline. Um, it remains to be seen if this is a trend that will rebound in the future, or it has introduced more instability into the local business environment. Next slide. Um, as mentioned, the, the area is really dominated by small business. And when we look at the license data, 91% of businesses have nine or less employees. Um, and when we look at a years of establishment, there are almost um, same percentage of older and more established business and newer business in the area, both around um, 40%. And this indicates that um, the, the area has a healthy business environment where businesses are able to stay in the area for a significant amount of time, but also able to attract new business into the area. And the average age of business in the more industrial Five Wounds and 24th and William Urban Villages is around 15 years compared to 11 years for the rest of the study area. And this also shows that uh, there is a particularly stable business environment within the industrial zones. Next slide. And um, lastly, we look at um, the uh, real estate um, cost and the status for business owners. So majority or nearly 90% of businesses in this study area rent their space, which also make them highly vulnerable to potential displacement if they're unable to afford to stay in this area in the future when um, rental rates increase. And so this sum up our existing condition analysis on the business front, um, and we welcome questions and um, inputs in the Q&A session.